I just wanted to stop everything and take the time today to let you know how very thankful I am that you've been there for me. I want to say thanks for never giving up on me. Thank you for providing meals for us after Blake's surgery. Thanks for making sure I always had a ride to chemo. And thank you for helping me through this difficult season in my life, God. Thank you, God, for teaching me to be a strong single dad. Dear God, thank you so much for giving me this new job. I love it. Thanks for sending Jeff to take my shift last week so I could be with my family. For keeping me company on the first day of school. Thank you, God, for helping us get that bill paid. Thank you, God, for the clothes on my back. For giving me the courage to speak the truth. Thank you for forgiving me. For making my day better. For giving my life a melody. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for every single day. And one final thing, God. Thank you for always loving me, no matter what. We've been learning how to enter his course with praise, and today we're going to talk about how we come through the gate of thanksgiving. We're going to practice a little early before I even start preaching at you. Go ahead and turn to your neighbor and say, I am thankful for you, all right? And mean it, mean it when you say it. Well, there's a little bit of thanksgiving going on in the room. Not sure whose fault that is. I get pumped about this particular Sunday every single year. We gain an hour every time on this day, right? And the good news is I got a whole extra hour to preach, so my sermon's double long today. I'm going. We ain't going home because we got an extra hour. Come on. Fired up preacher. When you mention the word Thanksgiving, what comes to your mind? For some, it's a family gathering. For many, it's turkey, pumpkin pie, cranberries, dressing, apparently extra gravy, whatever that means, all right? And, and we get all caught up in a day called Thanksgiving. And I'm thankful. I love this holiday. It may be one of my favorites as well. I love getting our family together. I love getting our church family together. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about this morning. But Thanksgiving, as you well know, is way more than a holiday. It's way more than a precursor to Black Friday. Now, for some of us, that's what it's become. We're already gearing up for Black Friday because Thanksgiving is here. But actually, Thanksgiving is a heart attitude. It is the attitude of our heart that shows up in the word we know as gratitude. For some reason, we as Baptists have to run it all through the filter of food, and that's how it becomes relevant in our life. Therefore, the staff this past week felt like it would be awesome to bring back our Thanksgiving holiday church-wide family dinner. So on Sunday night, November 17th, since we have a whole month that we are focusing on Thanksgiving, we're going to practice by gathering together to give thanks as a church family, and we want you to be there. It'll be our Sunday night church for this month. It'll be on November the 17th at 5 p.m., your church will be providing all the meal, all the fixings, everything at the table. You get to bring the heart of gratitude. And we'll gather up together all the generations, both services will combine in one, and we'll figure out how to fit in this place. We'll have a time where we give thanks through worship. We'll have a time we give thanks through testimonies. It will be an awesome, awesome time as the family of God. So mark that down. We do need you to RSVP. The meal is free. Uh, imagine that in a Baptist church. You don't have to pay a ticket for it, but we do need RSVP. You can do that on a communication card starting today or next week. Uh, you can do that in your ABF classes, which will have sign-up sheets next Sunday in your small group rooms. But we're learning what it means to be reverent in our worship, but also rejoicing in our worship. We call it being reverently loud, shouting to the Lord, singing a new song. Expressing our love for God through our praise and our thanksgiving. 
In Psalm 100, which has been our theme verse, uh, David was expressing his heart and teaching people how to express their hearts. And as we've looked at this, we looked first at the court of praise, but then you see the very first thing that David said happens as we approach God with our worship is we first enter the gate with thanksgiving. As we looked at the tabernacle, for those who weren't here, we saw the picture of the tabernacle, that place where they went to have their sins forgiven, that place they went to worship God and be right with God. And David taught them, as you come, you enter through that, and there was only one entry point. That is true of salvation, and that's true of how we're one with God. There's only one way, one truth, and one life. His name is Jesus. We come through him. He said, I am the gate, and anyone who comes through me can have a relationship with the Father. David taught us that as we worship God, the very first act of worship is to come with a heart of thanksgiving. If you have your Bibles, turn to Psalm 107 as we continue to learn from the hymn book of the faith how to give thanks to God. God's people should truly be the most thankful people on the planet. We're going to see and be reminded in several scriptures today, so put on your seatbelt and let's see what God shows us from his word. Verse 1 of Psalm 107. Oh, give, what's that word? Thanks. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His loving kindness is everlasting. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So who's being challenged here? The redeemed. If you've been redeemed, if you have been bought out of your sin, out of that debt payment that you could not pay, that he paid for you on a cross, every day you should be giving thanks. Let the redeemed say so. Can I hear it from the redeemed this morning? There's some starting to get it. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, for whom he has redeemed from the hand of the adversary. And he has gathered from the lands, from the east, from the west, from the north, and from the south. Here the psalmist points out that God's love and God's grace, his everlasting goodness, is expressed to all who would receive that gift from God. It wasn't just for a certain people on a certain piece of geography on this planet. It is for those from the north, the south, the east, and the west. You see, as we look at this psalm, thankfulness recognizes God for who he is. Notice the very first part, verse 1. He says, we give thanks to the Lord. Why? For he is good. Tom Duckett reminds us of that just about every single week. We remind that God is good and we respond he's good all the time. And all the time, we know God is good. It is our expression of thanksgiving from our heart, our heart attitude, to give gratitude for the goodness of God in our life. It also goes on to say that he is, look at the last part of verse 1, for his loving kindness is conditional. Aren't you glad his loving kindness is conditional? Aren't you glad his loving kindness is limited? It is seasonal. It's only during Thanksgiving season or Christmas. No, that's not what it says. His loving kindness is everlasting. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And how do, we, how do we do that? How does the redeemed declare that? With thanksgiving. I hope that you'll learn the power of thanksgiving, and we will walk through that together, learning and, and being reminded, more importantly, of all that we have been redeemed from. Notice in this verse, he says, Remember, it is he and he alone that has redeemed you from the adversary." It wasn't because you joined a church. It wasn't because you quit doing bad and started doing good. It wasn't because of anything that you or I have ever done. It was all what Christ did on our behalf. And he redeemed us from the power of the enemy who owned our soul, who owned our destiny, who owned our eternity. And Jesus Christ defeated the enemy by laying down his life. Every day I wake up, I want to be thankful for that kind of loving kindness in my life. And so with our praise, uh, we were reminded last week, go ahead, you can kind of hold your place in Psalms, it's pretty easy to find. Flip over to Ephesians chapter 5. We looked at it last week. As we looked at Ephesians 5, 19 last week, we were reminded that we are to praise God with our lips, with our songs, with our heart. For we're to speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with our hearts to the Lord. There's that heart attitude again. We don't just worship with our lips, 
We worship with our hearts. We learned last week that some of the reasons we don't worship in our heart is because our path, we walk in the wrong direction. We walk after the desires of our flesh. And then we can't praise with our hearts. But we find in verse 19 that we are to worship him in our praise. But now look at verse 20. This week, our focus, and we are to always give thanks. There's some definition given here. It continues on. Go ahead and underline it. Give thanks for what? Give thanks for all things. i got to wrestle with that one, to be quite honest. Don't you? Wrestling with the understanding. Whoa, 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 wait a minute, God. I live on a planet filled with chaos, sinful behaviors, and a culture that hates everything about God. How can I be thankful in all things? Well, we're going we're gonna to look at that today. As we go through Scripture, we're going to see that thanksgiving is the opposite of selfishness. Thanksgiving takes us outside of us and being focused on us, and it gives us the ability to focus on others, but more importantly, to focus on our God who has redeemed us. And so I want to give you an assignment for all the month of November and beyond, but we're going to practice in November. We're going to live it the rest of the year. Every day you wake up, we're going to do what Scripture says we're to do. It's that simple. It's in the pastor making you do it. It's scripture challenging you to experience the greatness, the abundant life that is ours through Christ. The Bible says always, my understanding of that word always means all the time. There is no break, there is no fall break, there's no winter break, there's no summer break. At all times, okay Lord, that means every day, give thanks. Thanks. I think that's pretty simple. This dude from Enid, Oklahoma gets it. I can read that, I can understand it, but am I living it? So every day in the month of November, I want, if you have to go buy a journal, if you've got to uh, write it on the mirror in your bathroom, for some of us, maybe on the fridge door where we see it every moment of every day, wherever, create a Thanksgiving list and make it visible. And by making that list, like you saw in the video, you start to respond with your heart. You ever notice, remember when we used to write letters? Remember those things? We've talked about this before. When you write notes of encouragement, when you write letters, your heart connects to that. When I write a text, my thumbs connect with it. That's it. Writing from the heart. Make your Thanksgiving list. Post it publicly. Remind yourself daily. Gather with your families every single day. And always in all things, give God thanks. Let's become the thankful people God has called us to be. So I want to go into scripture today. This is the launching pad of this whole month. And I want us to look at the theology of thanksgiving. The first thing we see about thanksgiving is the knowledge that we have been blessed. When I'm thankful, it is a time where I look back and I see all that God has done in my life. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 through, 12 through 14. Paul under inspiration of the Holy Spirit, said, I thank Christ Jesus. See, he's always thankful. And who's he thanking? I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has strengthened me because he considered me faithful. He put me into service. Even though I was formerly a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent aggressor, yet I was shown mercy. I acted ignorantly. I did that in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was more than abundant with the faith and love which is found in Christ Jesus. Paul told Timothy, Timothy, I'm the least worthy candidate for God's redemption. I was a blasphemer. I was a persecutor. I was a murderer. And God still chose to love me. And look at the very first part. What is his response in verse 12? I give thanks to Jesus my Lord every day I wake up I'm reminded of who I used to be but I don't stay there oh I was a sinner no I'm a sinner who has now been transformed into a child of the king yes I remember what I used to be but I I am redeemed and I'm a new person all things are gone the old has passed away and I live in the new but I have to remember where I came from to appreciate who I am today Have you forgotten your redemption? Have you forgotten all that God has done 
Paul looked back and said, I am thankful to the Lord Jesus who has redeemed me. Not only is it the knowledge that we have been blessed, but thanksgiving also is a result of the knowledge that I am still being blessed. James chapter 1, verse 17 says this, Every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above. It comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. It's amazing in all things that happen in our life how the enemy loves to try to get us to see God as unfair, as God is unloving and unkind. He is the father of all lies and he will twist and distort and he will use all things to rob you of thanksgiving. And yet in scripture it says it's in all things that we can give thanksgiving. One is understanding of what God has done for me in the past. Number two, it's also realizing what God is doing today. He is continually pouring out his provision and every great gift in my life every single day. I have a reason to give thanks, not only yesterday, but today. And the third reason we have to give thanks is the knowledge that he is the source of all blessings. We saw in James chapter 1, verse 17 there that Every perfect gift and every blessing comes from above. Do we only give thanks during holidays? Or do we make every day holy by giving him thanks for what he's done, what he's doing, and what he yet has to do? So, when do we give thanks? What does the Bible teach about giving thanks? Well, Ephesians 5.20, we saw earlier, we're to give thanks in all things. So there's number one, write it down. When do I give thanks? In all things. Wrestle with that this morning. And what are those things that are in your life right now that maybe the enemy is trying to use to rob you of thanksgiving? What if you were able to turn that around and through the Spirit of God, a Spirit-filled life, be able to live thanksgiving? Well, let's get some clues here. Psalm 34. Go to Psalm 34 this morning. You probably know this verse. In Psalm 34 in verse 1, the Bible says, again, I think this is probably what Paul was referring to in Ephesians chapter 5. He was probably referring back to what he had been taught in the Psalms. In Psalm 34, 1, it says, I will bless the Lord, when? At all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. The psalmist was able to say that. Are you able to say that? Can you say God's praise, God's thanksgiving is continually in my mouth? So what is continually in our mouth? I'm not talking about breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I'm talking about what's coming out of our mouths, the conversations we have, the, the attitude of our hearts. Because see, what is in your mouth comes from your heart. Thanksgiving is a heart attitude called gratitude. For some of us, right now, we need to confess to God that we've not been living Psalm 34, verse 1. We've not been thankful for all things. We've been thankful for some things, the good things, the easy things, the wonderful things. But are we thankful for all things? Or is the enemy robbing us of the heart of gratitude? So when do we give thanks? There are three times in Scripture that we should give thanks, and let's see if it covers all things. Number one, we're to give God thanks even before we're blessed. Write that down. Oh, you don't like that one, do you? Even before you're blessed, we're to give God thanksgiving. Look at Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. Apostle Paul was talking to them about fearful things. Apparently, those in Philippi were struggling and had fearful things, and Paul writes them and says, listen, you don't have to be anxious for much of many things. No, he says, for anything. We don't have to be fearful for a single thing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. As I look at the instruction of God's word, most of us pray when we have a need, most of us at least start out right, and we have this difficult thing, and so we get on our knees, we cry out to God, it's bigger than us, we can't do it, and so we finally acknowledge, God, I need you. 
We need him all the time, whether it's something we can handle or something we can't handle. But we get to those desperate moments and we cry out to God, God, I pray to you, be my master, be my Lord, may your power, and we pray for all those things. And then we wait, and we wait, and we wait for God to step into that. And when God answers, because he answers prayer, and when he answers that prayer, what is our next response? Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for what you have done. Well, as I look at this verse, we're reminded that, yes, we should pray because we all have major needs. We all have fearful situations. And yes, God will answer our prayers because he is sovereign and he is Lord of all. But Paul teaches we have our thanksgiving out of order. You say, it's not supposed to be in November. I'm not talking about a date. Our thanksgiving's out of order because we wait till he answers the prayer to give thanks when here it says, you make your request known to God with thanksgiving. It's a whole different perspective. When I saw that verse and when that finally became real in my life, I started praying differently. I started praying in victory. I started praying in rejoicing. I started praying with great expectation. Not waiting to give God thanks. Now, I still give him thanks on the back end too. But I also give him thanks on the front end. Why? Because it's his anyway. And he will work all things together for my good, for your good. So why would we not be thankful on the front end knowing that God is showing up because his goodness is everlasting? So we are to give thanksgiving before we're blessed. It's also biblical to give thanksgiving while we're being blessed. Let me show that to you. Flip over to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. When I give him thanks before the blessing, I come to him with great expectation. When I give God my thanks during the blessing, I am acknowledging my dependence on his provision. Take a look at it. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. In everything, what do we do? No, we don't. We gripe. We complain. <laughs> we accuse God. And we don't do that. We have to help God understand how he's missing it. Let's go with what the Bible says. No, in everything, give thanks. Whoa, watch this one. For This is God's will for you. So many people want to know God's will. So many people wrestle with God's will. Let's keep God's will real simple. First of all, God's will is that you be thankful. And when are we to be thankful? Well, we're to be thankful about all things, but look at what this verse says. It adds another piece to thanksgiving. Not only are we to be thankful about all things, but underline that first phrase, in everything. Now, this is going to blow a couple theological circuits. And we wrestle with this in our humanity, but we got to remember we're not just human we are supernatural children of God. He has given us his spirit to reveal truth to us. And you don't have to live in your humanness. You don't have to live in a worldly understanding when you can understand so much more. The Apostle Paul got it. The Apostle Paul who earlier said, I'm not a worthy candidate to receive this, but I give thanks to Jesus for what he's done and how he's redeemed me, would go on to be a testimony of constant thanksgiving. In all things... And about all things. You don't believe me? You remember the story about Paul and Silas? They had gone to preach the gospel. They were faithful to God. They were doing what they were supposed to be doing. They cast a demon out of a girl that was being used for profit in the community. It messed up their economy. The city people got all upset, had Paul and Silas beaten and thrown into prison. How would you like to be in his sandals? How would you like to be in that? Now, wait a minute, God, I, I, just, I just ministered to a girl. I, I'm serving you. I'm being, I'm being faithful to preach the gospel. And Lord, now I'm being beaten for it. Does that make sense? Now I'm thrown in prison, and if you know much about the prisons of those days, they were brutal. They were foul. It was one of the worst places you could find on planet Earth. And here he is. Why? Because he was serving God. How can you be thankful in broken bones, open wounds, 
and falsely accused and thrown in prison. Well, we look in on that story, and because Paul was a person who practiced what he preached, didn't matter if he was in prison or out of prison, didn't matter if he was getting beaten or being hugged for ministering to people, he was always thankful. He was always thankful. If you look in on the story, you can read about it in the book of Acts, and what you'll find is at midnight, Paul and Silas, in this prison, listen to what it says, were praying and singing hymns of praise to God. In an ugly moment, in a brutal moment, in a painful, dark moment, it didn't change their thanksgiving. And because they were thankful in all things at all times, they lived with a heart attitude of gratitude. And they were doing that in prison says, listen to this, as they were singing hymns of praise to God, the prisoners, listen to that, the prisoners were listening to them. Oh, if I was singing in prison, they'd be throwing stuff at me, all right? (laughs) But they were making such a joyful noise to the Lord. It was such a foreign experience in prison because if you'd been in that prison, you would have heard cursing, you would have seen flesh, you would have seen all kinds of Horrible heart attitudes, but there were two who were different. And in that ugliest of moments, in that place where no one was thankful, we find Paul and Silas praising God and giving thanks. How do you do that? Only the Spirit of God in you can do that. Well, as they were singing praise to God, as everyone was listening in, the jailer, The jailer walked up to him, and he didn't walk up with a whip, and he didn't tell him to be quiet. You know what he said to them? What must I do to be saved? So while they were being thankful in this painful moment, others were listening. We will all have painful moments on this earth, every one of us. Every one of us will have things that happen in our family, in our life, in our health, in our jobs, in our neighborhoods, Anywhere we are, we'll go through painful experiences. And people are listening in. And I pray, I pray they don't hear a bunch of griping Baptists. I hope they don't hear a bunch of whining and cheesers, whining all the time about what God isn't doing in our lives. But I pray to God we could be people of thanksgiving. And when that happens revival breaks out this jailer gets saved that night no telling what was going on in this man's heart no telling how foul and how messed up his world was being a jailer of prisoners but he got saved he wanted what they had he was miserable and he was on the outside of the cell and he was watching guys on the inside who were wrongly accused who had more joy than he had he wanted it if you go back in the book of acts you'll hear the rest of the story So when he asked that question, what must I do to be saved, listen in. He said, believe in the Lord Jesus. You will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him together with all who were in his house. And he took them that very hour of the night. He washed their wounds. He was immediately baptized, he and his whole household. How cool is that? How awesome is that? And it all started from a heart attitude of gratitude. A people who had a terrible situation, but still had a mighty God. A people who were suffering, but were still rejoicing. That's who we can be in Christ if we will be that, if we'll be in Christ and not in the circumstance. So yes, I praise God even before I'm blessed. I praise God even in his blessings. And thirdly, And we'll close with this. We praise God even after the blessings have been received. If you have your Bibles, turn over to Luke chapter 17. Do it quickly for me. That hour we gained has been lost. Verse 11. Take a look at it. So while he was on way, the way to Jerusalem, he was passing between Samaria and Galilee. We're in verse 11. Now verse 12. 
As he entered a village, ten leprous men, you know this story, there were ten leprous men who stood at a distance to meet him. They were not allowed to come up to anybody. They had to stay at a distance because they were, rede- they were deemed unclean. They were lepers. They raised their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they were going, as they were obedient to his word, they were cleansed. I love verse 15. Now one of them, when he saw that he had been healed, he turned back, glorifying God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at the feet. Go ahead and underline that next phrase. What did he do? Did he give a love offering to Jesus? He gave him what? Thanks. Thanks. Giving thanks to him. Oh, by the way, remember, this guy was a Samaritan. Samaritans weren't supposed to be thankful for any Jew in their life, and Jews weren't thankful for the Samaritans in their world. And yet here we find thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is bigger than ethnicity. It's bigger bigger than our prejudice. It's bigger than our flesh. It is a heart attitude. Verse 17, then Jesus answered and said, were there not ten cleansed? He's trying to do the math. But... But the nine, where, where are the other nine? Was no one found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, stand up and go. Your faith has made you well. We look at the story. Ten out of ten were miraculously healed. One out of ten was thankful. As I look at this audience, there's more than ten who've been healed of their leprosy. That leprosy would be a picture of our uncleanness. Our leprosy was called sin, and all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All. That, oh. Draw the circle bigger. All. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And for those who have called out on the Lord Jesus to redeem them, to pay that debt that no man could pay, that we couldn't pay, for those who have been redeemed... All who know that redemption should fall on their face daily and give them thanks. But history shows us it's about one out of ten. It's about one out of ten that seem to live the heart of thanksgiving. May we skew the numbers. May we break the mold. And may all who have been redeemed say so. God, thank you. Let's pray. With every head bowed and every eye closed, you were scared it was going to be a two-hour sermon. Don't you want to be the one? Don't you want to be like that one we just read about? Are you willing to be the one who lives a life of thanksgiving? Before you're blessed, while you're being blessed, And the blessings yet to come. Every moment of every day, in all things and for all things, we can be thankful. Not because they're always good things, but because God's goodness is everlasting. Whether we're in prison or out of prison. Whether we're in the circumstances that are warm and fuzzy. Or the circumstances that are hurtful and painful. He's still God. He's still our Redeemer. He's still the God of abundant life. Let our hearts have the attitude of gratitude. This morning, as we're praying, Tom will begin to sing in a moment. And as he does, perhaps as you're sitting there right now, if you were honest about your heart, you would say, My heart hurts. My heart's empty. I can't give God thanks for all things because I've never given God my heart. It starts there. It's a heart attitude. And it could be that there's somebody today you need to give your heart to Jesus. There'll be staff here at the front. They'd love to show you from Scripture and pray with you and help you find a Savior today. If that's you, I pray you'll be the first to come. And yet I know there are many like the lepers in this story. You've been healed of your sin. You've trusted Christ 
He has redeemed you. He has forgiven you. But you may need to fall on your face before God, whatever that looks like. Whether it's turning around and kneeling at your chair, whether you want to come to the altar just because you feel like that's a way of symbolizing your surrender and commitment to Him, your thanksgiving to Him. Maybe we need to return and say, God, forgive me for not being thankful in all things. God, forgive me for not for not painting the picture to those who are listening in of a thankful servant. I don't know what your response is. Maybe, maybe today God is drawing you to a church family where you can grow in this heart of thanksgiving. We'd love for you to come as well. Whatever the need, whatever the moment, I hope you'll respond. This is called an invitation. It's not an invitation just to join a church or just to walk an aisle. It's God's invitation inviting you to respond to his word. What is your response? Do you need salvation? You come. Do you need prayer? You come. Do you need a church family? You come. Do you have another need? We'd invite you. This is a time to respond to your Lord God. Father, we surrender all this time to you now. May it be holy ground, just like the ground of that leper that fell at the feet of Jesus. God, may we have that same heartbeat of thanksgiving. For we ask this in Jesus' name and for his sake. Hey, my name's Breelan. You're watching Connection Points, and here's what's going on at PCBC. Ladies, our annual Christmas tea is happening this year on December 14th. We are celebrating that hope is still alive. You can pick up your tickets starting today at the Hub or online. We have a team heading back to Zambia in 2020, and the Edwards would love to give you more information on how you can join in. There will be an info meeting today, immediately after the 1105 service in room 149. Hey Pioneers, don't forget about your Thanksgiving event happening this Thursday, November 7th at 10.30 a.m. You can count on bingo, good food, and awesome entertainment. Kids and parents alike, get excited for the next date night happening on Friday from 6 to 9 p.m. Parents, we've got your child care covered. We just ask that you let us know if your kiddos are coming by the end of today by registering at pcbc.tv slash events. Last year, we set up our first ever angel tree for our whiz kids and single parent family friends. And you guys went above and beyond with your gift giving. So we're doing it again this year. Starting this Sunday, you can take an angel or two off the tree, buy the gift listed on the angel, wrap the gift, put the angel back on the wrapped gift and place it under the tree. Please place all gifts under the tree no later than Sunday, December 1st. Also, please be praying for the Christmas event for all of these friends on Thursday, December 12th. Get excited for Next Step Sunday happening super soon. Mark your calendars for Sunday, November 17th. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Breland. We hope you have a great week and we will see you soon.